Hello everybody, I'm Miss Lisa. Welcome back to another episode of the Read Woke Reading Challenge. Today we're going to be talking about LGTBQ voices for our April 8th session, and I'm going to be using the book Pride, the Story of Harvey Milk and the Rainbow Flag. So I'm going to be teaching you something about the rainbow flag, and I've got a really fun art project to go along with this. So let me tell you what we'll need. You'll want a couple pieces of paper, a pencil, an eraser if you need one. You'll need some colors because we're talking about a rainbow flag. So you can either use crayons or markers or watercolor paints. If you use the paints, you'll also want some water a paintbrush, and it's good to have paper towels on hand as well. If you're using crayons, the colors that you will need are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. These are the colors that are found in the six color rainbow flag. The original flag also had a stripe of pink at the very top and there was a stripe of turquoise between the green and the blue. So let's draw the original rainbow flag together. I'm going to use the back of my crayon because it makes a nice wide line. There was pink at the top. The second stripe was red. Then orange. and yellow. Green. Turquoise. Blue. And purple. Now after this version, it was modified a couple times and it turned into a six stripe flag, which is the flag that is most commonly used today. And the six stripes would be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So this is the rainbow fly commonly used today. The pink and the turquoise are not used any longer. And the rainbow flag was written by Rob Sanders, and this book was illustrated by Stephen Salerno. The rainbow flag is a symbol of love. Harvey Milk dreamed that everyone, including gays, should have equality and should live and love as they pleased. And Harvey Milk talked to everybody about his dream, and he went into politics so that he could help make the laws that could make his dream a reality. In 1977, he became one of the first openly gay politicians elected to office in the U.S. And he realized that the gay community needed a symbol to bring them together. And he wanted the symbol to give them pride. And he wanted to be able to 
used this symbol in marches so that everybody could recognize the gay community and come out and support them. He contacted his friend Gilbert Baker and challenged him to create a symbol of pride for the gay community. And Gilbert said, hmm, we need a flag. And this is how the rainbow flag idea came to being. He thought of this flag and he was able to sew so he could sew the flag himself, but he needed the fabrics. And so he called his friends and a lot of volunteers came over and dyed a lot of fabric in bright different colors. So he had big strips of fabric in red, in pink, in orange, in yellow, in green, in turquoise, in blue, and purple. And he got to work on his sewing machine and he sewed the first rainbow flag. And this was the eight color version with pink at the top and purple at the bottom. And this eight color, eight stripe version was first flown in the San Francisco Gay Freedom Parade in, on June 25th, 1978. Sadly, five months later, Harvey Milk and the mayor of San Francisco as well were assassinated by somebody who did not believe that gay people should have equal rights. After the assassinations, the demand for, for the pride flag increased significantly and many, many more pride flags were made, as well as a lot of items that were decorated with the rainbow motif. Many, there were uh, other events where rainbow flags were, were seen and the popularity of the flag just grew and grew. Soon this flag was seen in other cities and in other states and pretty soon it was seen around the world. I just have to tell you about the largest uh, rainbow flag that was made. I mean, there's an even bigger one now, but the largest one for some time was the one that um, was written about in the book. It was a mile long, and it was made with the six-color stripe version. I think it was 30 feet across and one mile Six. long. So, so we now know about the history of the rainbow flag, and... Harvey Milk's dream became a reality because people now had pride, hope, equality, and love. When I think about the rainbow flag, I think, wouldn't it be cool, and I know that I'm just using my imagination, but wouldn't it be cool if you had rainbow paint? Can you imagine what things would look like if you were able to take a paintbrush and dip it into rainbow paints, and then paint things with rainbows with one swipe of your paintbrush. So this is what I did here with crayons. I took a look at some cacti, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I could, here's my paintbrush, if I could come in with my paintbrush, and can you see the rainbow? paint dripping off the end there. There's one drop of paint that's ready to fall, but the paint's also up on the bristles there. It's, the bristles have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, all in one paint. And here I painted this cactus with rainbow paint. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? So I don't know if I'll have time to show you how to draw and paint this. I might. I just want to start with a, a very simple demonstration, first of all, of how to, if you had rainbow paint, how you could paint something, the colors of the rainbow. Okay, so now I'm going to draw with a black crayon an outline of some of these shapes so you'll be able to see it better in the camera. So let's start with this paddle here.
and it attaches to this one. So let's go ahead and I want my fruits to kind of come down onto it. So I'll do oh, this is the little paddle here. And it's behind this, but then this fruit is going to be sticking out here. Here's another fruit. I feel like this guy needs a, a little something, so I'll add a little one here. And then we've got the paintbrush. Let's bring it down like this. A drop of paint. And the handle. So let's think about how to divide up these shapes again. Let's start with this one here. It's fairly flat. So we want to think about, we can think about more straight lines than curved lines. And we want to divide this shape in half with a line. And then each half, we're going to divide in thirds. So let's start with this one. If I put a dot there and a dot there, I'm looking for this distance to equal this distance to equal this distance. And that's pretty close to true. So I'm going to make a line that goes through that dot and a line that goes through that dot. I'm going to do the same thing on the other half. I'm going to put a line, a dot there and there, and that divides this space into thirds with this equaling this distance, which equals this distance. Okay, let's take a look at, we'll do the same thing down here. Let's think about this distance, and we're going to divide it in half. And then we're going to divide each half into thirds. Here's the first half, here's the second half. And this one, the stripes are going to be going this way just for some variation. So let's think about this distance here and dividing it in half. And then we have this distance. And we're going to divide it into thirds. Put two dots there. And then we're looking at this distance and we divide it into thirds. Let's just make sure we have eight stripes, One, I mean six stripes. One, two, three, four, five, six. See how nicely that works? And let's take a look at this shape. This is a really small paddle. So let's divide it in half, and then we're going to divide each half into thirds. And here's another one. So let's divide it in half and divide each half into thirds. There's a nice big one. 
We'll divide it in half first, and then we'll divide each half into thirds. And now we've got the fruits. And remember that those are more cylindrical. So we're going to be thinking about curved lines. So let's find the halfway point of this one. And we're going to make a curved line. And then we're going to divide it into this half into thirds and that half into thirds, just like before but with curved lines. So once you get the center curve line, you can just make sure that your other curved lines follow the line at the center. So here we have another one. Divide this into half and use curved lines. Here's another one. Divide it into half. As you can see, these are not perfect, but it's okay. You don't need to get out your ruler. One more. Half curved line. Divide each half into thirds. Okay. So there we have our basic drawing. I'm going to just clean up a couple of these lines. Because I'm going to be using watercolor and watercolor is once you paint over pencil lines, they're kind of stuck for good. So let's just tidy them up a tiny bit. In general, I don't like to use erasers. Okay. Now I'm going to also use crayon in the part here on the brush because this is going to be very hard to get watercolors into the small space and not have them all mixed together. And I want my colors to be separate so we can see this wonderful rainbow paint on our brush. So I'm going to take some red and a tiny bit in the drop and then some orange and a tiny bit in the drop and then some yellow. and some green. Don't worry if you can't get the colors to be seen individually in the drop. Just a little bit will tell our brain that is rainbow paint. Okay, and now I'm just going to use the brown crayon to make the rest of the bristles in the paintbrush. And I might just use a little bit of black up here. And then the rest I'm going to do with paint. So let's start. Normally I would start with yellow because yellow is the lightest color and it's a lot easier to work from light to dark and that way when you get to the yellow you, you don't have other colors mixing in with it. However, today we're going to paint from red to violet in the order of the rainbow of the rainbow flag. So I'm going to start with red and I'm going to paint all the things on my painting here that are going to be red. I'm going to do that all at once.
and I'm using my paint somewhat dry today and it's not really drippy because I want to control it somewhat. I'm going to try not to have too much mixing on the paper because I would like these rainbows to be very distinct like they are here in the crayon version. There's not mixing between the stripes. Just like on the rainbow flag, they're very distinct stripes. Wouldn't this be fun to be able to take out your paintbrush and just paint pictures where the paint came out as a rainbow? What would you paint first? Okay, when you think you're done with red, just take a quick look and make sure that the top stripe of all of your shapes is red. So I've got red on all of mine. And after you've done that, we're going to go into the orange and resuspend the orange. And now I'm going to try to leave a little bit of white paper between the stripes so the colors won't mix because as soon as you get wet watercolor paint next to another wet watercolor paint, the colors will run together. So I'm going to try to keep them separate. You might need to turn my paper occasionally to get the right angle because I usually paint in a, a freer style. Um, style than this. If your red is fairly dry, you'll have less chance of the paints mixing, but mine's still pretty wet. I think if I had rainbow paint, I would paint the most amazing field of wildflowers. So the flowers would be, each flower would have a different shape. They would be different kinds of flowers, but they would be painted in the color of the rainbow. Okay, now you have to rinse your brush really well because we are going to be going into the yellow next. And we know how yellow gets mixed in. Other colors get mixed into yellow so easily because yellow is the lightest color. Everything that get mixed, gets mixed into it alters the color. 
significantly. Okay, so again, I'm not going to get right up to my orange because I want my yellow stripes to stay yellow without mixing into the orange. You can see I, I did not succeed there, but that's okay. This yellow is so beautiful and bright, the color of daffodils. Now I'm going to go into the green. So I rinse my brush into the green. You can see that on my crayon drawing, I actually put the spines of the cactus on the drawing as well. And I'm not going to paint them on black paint. When this dries, I would take a felt tip pen and go into the paddles and the fruits and make the spines right on top of the paint after it dries. Because if I paint them with the paintbrush, they're going to be thicker than I wanted. You know, spines are very thin, so it would be easier and faster just to do them with an ink pen after the painting has dried. If I do it when the painting's wet, of course, the black is going to mix into the paints. It would also be fun to paint animals with um, rainbow colors, wouldn't it? Maybe butterfly. Can you imagine painting butterflies? It would also be very pretty on paintings of drawings of insects because they're so colorful anyways. How about an undersea scene in rainbow colors? Okay, only two colors left. We're into the blue now. I'm still trying to keep the, the blue away from the green. But not always succeeding. Now you can see why I used crayon on the paintbrush bristles. That would have been very difficult to do with paint. And it's not a disaster if some of these colors mix together because it actually looks super cool. And you can still tell that it's, it's a rainbow. It's the colors of the rainbow.
And there we have it. A rainbow cactus in watercolor. So like I said, I would let this dry completely and then take a black felt pen and go ahead and make the spines like this, but after the paint dries. So I hope you enjoyed that project. Try this again uh, with other shapes. I mean, you could draw all sorts of things and then paint them with rainbow colors, just like the rainbow flag. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. That's all for now. Take care. Goodbye.